Hey everyone, happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you are well and having a great week. Listen, we're still in our field series. We've had some ups and some downs, some challenges, even as far as uh, where you've been challenged spiritually uh, to now uh, leave that old place, leave that old mindset and go into the new, go further uh, into the journey uh, and on the journey that God wants you to go on as one who is filled with the Spirit. And even in the midst of everything we've been going through, you know, I wasn't feeling well the past uh, couple of weeks, or at least the past uh, week, and thank you for all those uh, who have been praying for me, taking those vitamins, and I'm feeling better. Uh, and I've jumped right back in there, and I had to literally remember uh, who wants control of my mind, but being filled who has control of my mind, who has control of my spirit and the spirit that is within. So as we go a little further, remember that you are filled with the spirit, stimulated by the spirit. And uh, there is a key point here, uh, a, a key piece of evidence that uh, represents us being filled with the spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight and over our next few times together. So uh, listen, uh, my prayer for you, of course, is that your eyes will be anointed to see, your ears will be open and anointed to hear, your hearts will be open and anointed to receive, and that your minds will be open and anointed to understand all that God has for you during our time together. And that at the end of this, at the end of this evening, at the end of whenever you're watching this, that uh, your testimony will be, I got it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now listen, grab your notebooks, grab your Bibles. We won't be here long, but if you're ready to learn, I'm ready to teach. Teaching. We've been studying for the past couple of weeks from Ephesians chapter 5 when Paul is addressing the believers at Ephesus. Now, we've been looking at it from both the NIV and from the Classic Amplified. Let's take a look at it just from the Classic Amplified tonight, and we're going to move past just verses 17 and 18. We're going to look a little before and a little after. Uh, but turn over to Ephesians chapter 5 from the Classic Amplified. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. So here it is in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is telling the believers at Ephesus to be careful how they walk, to be careful how they live, to live purposely, to live accurately according to the word of God and being led by the spirit, moving according to the spirit. Uh, but not only is he saying be filled with the spirit, but from the classic Amplified, it uses that word stimulated. And we've been using uh, the analogy that if you touch some open wires, that uh, there will be a stimulation that takes place and uh, there will probably be probably be an outward expression of what you're feeling on the inside. So to be filled with the Spirit, uh, but then stimulated by it, stimulated by it means that there's an outward expression of what's on the inside, that there is an outward expression of an inward experience. So Paul is telling them uh, to be filled with the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, uh, to live according to the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit. May there be evidence of the Spirit that is within. And um, uh, that is what we've been saying we need to do as well, that in our obedience, in the way that we walk, in the way that, that we uh, engage, in the way that we uh, just uh, do all that God is calling us to do, uh, uh, operating from a place of confidence, being filled with, and then boldness, how we engage and how we go about to do what God has called us to do in this Christian life. But uh, Paul then goes on a little further and then he starts addressing our mouths. Now, let me get this out of the way. We're going to talk about it over the next few weeks, a little bit, but I don't want to spend too much time here. And uh, that here is the importance of your mouth, that your words are powerful. You know, I believe it's from the Message Bible uh, that one verse says uh, that, uh, that, that your words, they either give life or they give death. Now, we know that, uh, that the life and death is in the power of the tongue, but your words, they either kill or they give birth. They either allow things to live or they cause things 
to die. But I want you to look at a different portion of scripture, one that may not be so familiar with you, but it's in John chapter 6. Turn over there, we're going to look at it from both the King James Version and from the Message. Okay, let's start at verse 2. Bless the Lord, from the King James Version, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5, who satisfieth, who satisfieth my, thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So Jesus is making it so clear here that when we have faith in, in him, when we have faith in Jesus Christ, it is less about uh, what is spoken or what is experienced in the natural. We can even think about communion and how when we uh, eat the bread and, and drink the blood it, it, or, or, the, or the juice, it's not actually drinking uh, the blood of Jesus and, and eating the body of Jesus. So what Jesus is pointing to, he's pointing to a spiritual issue, a spiritual importance uh, that, uh, that in order to have faith in him, that there must be something deep down on the inside, that when we believe, we believe to our core, that, that it is really on the inside, that it is something that uh, has consumed us fully. Uh, and, uh, and, and what he says, is that walking in the flesh and doing things naturally, naturally, uh, that, that really it's not going to lead to success. It's not going to profit uh, uh, you in, in, in any way. But uh, you have to be filled <laughs> with the Spirit and really believe and there be faith there, there be that uh, uh, being fully persuaded and completely convinced. But, but what he says is, he says, listen, uh, the words I speak, my words, uh, they are spirit and they are life. Uh, they are spirit. They are spirit words. The words that I speak are spirit words. If you follow me, if you have faith in me, listen, my words are spirit words. You should speak spirit words. And those words are life Giving. So, uh, again, just laying the foundation, your words have power, that your words give life, that we know, again, that your words can uh, cause for there to be life or cause for there to be death. There is power in your tongue. Now, the enemy knows that as well, so here's the thing, that when we speak, uh, because our words give life, but we've just got to make sure that we're speaking uh, uh, from the right kind of spirit. So as our words, as, as words come up and come out, listen, whatever's in you is always going to come out. Whatever fills, spills. So now if the words that we are speaking, just like Jesus, if they are spirit and they give a life, they are from a spirit and they can make things happen, we've got to make sure that the spirit that our words are coming from is a God spirit. We've got to make sure that the spirit that our words are coming from, the, the spirit that is sending out those words, whatever fills, spills, the, the words that are spilling out is coming from the spirit of God and not the spirit of this age or the spirit of this world. Is not coming from a place of carnality, is not coming from a place of, 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 of operating in the natural, but is literally coming from the Holy Spirit. That's what we have to make sure of. You know, I had a dream the other day that uh, that I was flying and the dream was so crazy and I was just flying and then uh, you know the deep the deep bird and the deep best were all on the streets and I and I remember as I was flying around I remember some church uh, person said oh and he hovered over the earth and, and, and I started laughing as I'm flying around and I was literally thinking about this dream and, and, and it brought me back to Ephesians chapter 1 you know the Bible says speaking about Jesus that he's far above all principalities uh, and I thought about, well, because uh, God has given us his spirit, that I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, I'm also far above. I'm far above chaos. I'm far above low self-esteem. I'm far above depression. I'm far above all principalities. I'm far above rulers of darkness. I'm far above the natural. And the Bible says that, that, that God placed everything under his feet. So uh, as one who God created and has given dominion upon this earth, God has placed things in the natural under my feet. Well, what God is saying, listen, I've caused you to live on top of the, on top of the world. I've called you. I've anointed 
appointed you to live on top of the world, you are living and operating uh, from the basis of, of, of as, as if you were created in, from, and for the natural realm, but that is not what I called you to. That I've placed you to live on top of the world, I've even placed all things in the natural, in the world, under your feet, I've given you dominion and power, I've called you to, to, to reign and to rule with authority, I've called you to fly, I've called you uh, to, uh, you know, to really, you know, if we go back to that dream that I had to hover over the earth, well, why is it that you are not living on top of the world, but you are living from the world, that you are living from a place that, that you are operating on that level? Well, it's your mouth. If So God is saying, if I can just get your mouth together, if I can just get your tongue together, that you will live on top of the world and not live on it, that you will live in the supernatural and you will live supernaturally, naturally, instead of living naturally in the natural. That miracles should be a natural thing for you. The supernatural should be a natural thing for you. Speaking a thing and seeing a thing should be a natural thing to you. I've called you to live on top of the world. I've called you to be far above. Now, I've already given you that power. I've already set that thing in order. I've already caused it to happen. So what is it that is the problem? It's your mouth. It is your mouth. It is your confession. It is your profession. Uh, what you are speaking. What you are really uh, writing on the tablets of your every day. That 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 is what is controlling uh, uh, your days. That is what is controlling your mind. That is what is controlling your environment. Uh, but uh, you've got to do some things to get your mouth right. So God says, if I can get your mouth right, uh, then uh, I will be able to cause, or you will be able to make your way prosper. If you can get your mouth right, if you can line up your mouth with my word, if you can line up your mouth with what I've already said. When, when I'm talking to children, I usually uh, um, use the, uh, or paint the picture of a principal's office. And there are different people who are in the principal's office, but I'm speaking to adults, so here's the thing. This is the way I'll put it. Now, this is not Bible, this is PJ. There's a boardroom in heaven. In the boardroom of heaven sits God the Father, God the Son, in God the Holy Ghost. Uh, the scripture says that Jesus is the high priest and the apostle. I believe it's over in Hebrews. Uh, uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, da, 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 yeah, he Hebrews chapter 3. The Bible says that Jesus is the high priest. I believe it's from the King James Version. Uh, it says that he's uh, the apostle over our profession or the apostle over our, over our confession. Uh, what is it saying here is that, listen, Jesus is the one that we profess. Jesus is the one that we confess. The, Jesus is the one that we acknowledge. He is Lord. He is the Son of God. He is the one that we speak about, and He has authority. But I like to even put it in the context of He reigns, He rules, He has authority over our words. That He is the high priest and the apostle over what I say. Now, how can I say that? Well, because the Bible says that, uh, that, that Jesus said that, that, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, in my name. So now things can happen. I can cause things to happen. My prayers are not falling upon deaf ears. But when I pray, I know that my Father hears them. Come on now, let's go back over to Romans chapter 8 when Paul told us that the Spirit testifies that we are children of God, that we have the ability to speak to God and God hears us, but then the Spirit testifies that you're a son of God, that you're a child of God. So now I know that I've been given a name. I've been given Jesus Christ. Jesus said, when you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that that thing shall be done unto you. That, so, so I know that I have access to all spiritual blessings. I have access to all the things that I'm hoping for, to all the things that I'm expecting because of Jesus. So now Jesus is the high priest and the apostle over my confession, over what I say, over my words. And now let's go back to that boardroom. Sitting in that boardroom is God the Father. That's the big boss. That's Big Daddy. God the Son, Jesus, the apostle over my words, and God the Holy Spirit. Now I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, but then God's got these angels. Glory to God. That the Bible says that the angels hearken to the word of God. One version says they hearken to the voice of God. Now, where do we fit in with that? Well, we put our voice to God's word. That what comes out of our mouth, it should already be up in us, whatever fills, spills, but then the word of God comes out and the angels are dispatched. Now, why are the angels dispatched? Because they know that Jesus is the high priest and the apostle over our confession. But here's the thing, just as 
we know that, that there is a heavenly boardroom and they are just waiting for us to speak the word of God, to speak God words. What are God words? Well, words that line up with the word of God, words that are the word of God and then angels are dispatched to make things happen. Uh, um, uh, but there is also another boardroom that, that, that you better believe that Satan has his group and he's just waiting. The boardroom of hell is waiting for you to speak words that don't line up with the word of God so they can manifest whatever uh, those words are in your life. So I say all that to say your words are powerful, <laughs> that they give life. Uh, the Bible says here again that, that when Jesus said in John chapter 6, my words that I speak, they are spirit words and they are life giving. So one, we got to make sure that the right spirit is sending out those words. Why? Because those words are going to manifest. Uh, and if you can get your mouth right, you can get your life right. All right. Uh, so now let's go back over uh, to to uh, Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter five. We've been looking at verses seventeen and eighteen for the past couple of weeks, but now we're going to move a little further. We're going to look at verse 19 next. So turn back over to Ephesians chapter 5. And let's look at verse 19 from the Classic Amplified. So verse 19, speak out to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments, and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. So here was, Paul has been telling the believers of Ephesus uh, how to walk, how to live, how to operate. Uh, and telling them, listen, don't go about life living haphazardly, uh, but 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 live a purposeful life. Live a life on purpose, according to the Word of God, according to the Spirit of God. Uh, don't be foolish. Don't be vague. Uh, but 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 live according to the Spirit, and then be stimulated by it. There should be an outward expression. Uh, well, here's the outward expression. Now, it, it's almost like he flips the script. And immediately after saying to be filled with the Spirit, walk according to the Word of God, walk according to the Spirit of God, now singing, uh, uh, communicating uh, uh, with praise, with songs, with hymns, now he's addressing our mouth. Uh, and uh, what he's saying here is that, uh, is that what should come out of your mouth should be praise unto God. Uh, but, but really it's focusing on the fact that our mouths line right up with being filled with the Spirit. What comes out of our mouth and really praise. Praise is evidence that we are filled. But but let's just focus on our mouth for a second. We'll talk about praise as we go forward. But he's pointing to the power of our words again. So this is what I want to say. We've been talking about this, and we said this early on in the series that uh, that 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 war, uh, that that spiritual battle, because what we think about as far as spiritual warfare today, that's already been won, uh, based upon Colossians, what Paul said there, uh, you know, that, 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 that when Jesus was up on that cross, that the power of principalities, all, all authority uh, for principalities, boy, it was nailed to the cross as well. Uh, but spiritual warfare, we've been saying that the battle is for your mind. But I'm going to throw this out there. Point number one, there is a battle for your mouth. The enemy is, yes, we know he's after our mind, but I will say, the enemy is after your mouth. That if the enemy can get you to speak some things, if the enemy can get you to start confessing what doesn't line up with the word of God, trust and believe the enemy is winning the battle. So the battle is after your mouth. Uh, uh, take a look over at, uh, just to prove this point a little further, let's look at uh, a familiar psalm, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, I'm going to look at one verse there. Psalm 103 from the King James Version. Ter turn there. Okay, let's start at verse 2. Bless the Lord from the King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 5. Who satisfieth who satisfieth my, thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So isn't it interesting here that verse 5, it says, Who satisfies my mouth with good things and then renews my youth like the eagles. Now, what is it saying to us? Uh, I think it's very interesting that in order for your youth to be renewed, in order for renewal to take place, your mouth has got to be checked. So, so first comes your mouth and then comes renewal. The word renew, it means to resume 
after an interruption. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that with what we're seeing in this year and what we're seeing in these times, we're expecting and needing the glory of God, the visible manifestation of the presence of God. I think that there have been some interruptions. Now think about your life. Have there been interruptions? What has interrupted your plans? What has interrupted those things that you were believing God for? What has caused for there to be interruptions in your family? Interruptions in your finances? Interruptions in your productivity? What has caused for there to be interruptions or where have there been interruptions in this season of your life? But here's the thing, in order for there to be a, a resuming, a resuming of the plan of God, a resuming of you just uh, fast forwarding into your day, destiny, uh, in order for things to resume, uh, when you felt like, listen, I'm going to the mountaintop, listen, you still going to the mountaintop, but in order for that journey to resume, you got to get your mouth together. You got to check your mouth so that there can be a, 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 a resuming uh, after the interruption. Uh, so uh, the interruption, at the end of the day, remember that you are far above. And I will just say this, you are far above all interruptions. But here's the thing, in order for you to really be far above all interruptions and live on top of the world, as God has caused you uh, called you to live upon, and really, at the end of the day, remember that that's already done. That is not a new thing. It is not a new thing for you to live supernaturally, naturally. It's already been done. It's already been established. It's already been written into law. God, That is God's decree for you, but all you have to do is get your mouth together. So we want uh, to be far above all interruptions. Now, how is there going to be a manifestation of us being far above any of the interruptions, even interruptions in your health? Uh, you got to get your mouth together. That if you can get your mouth together, now we know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it goes back to being filled uh, with the spirit. We got to make sure that we got the right spirit on the inside of us, then our mouths are going to speak. Uh, but if you can get your, your mouth together as you're claiming to be filled, it's not just going to be in word only. Uh, remember that Jesus made it very clear in John chapter 6 that, listen, it's not about just a natural thing here, but you've got to have this thing down in the core of you, that it has literally got to consume you. And if you can get your mouth together, the interruptions will be of no effect, that you're far above them. All right, so number one, we've got to recognize that there is a battle for your mouth. In a verse based upon Psalm uh, 103, renewal uh, comes uh, when we get our mouths together. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to turn there. Actually, yeah, go ahead. Turn over to James, uh, uh, because James here, man, he, he, he reads you. If you think that preachers and me, that, that, that we may be tough with the things that, that, that we're saying, and let me just encourage you also that as I'm communicating these things to you, when I use the word you, I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to me. And trust and believe that God is dealing with me. And even when I was not feeling well, even physically, last week, listen, it is something that I had to literally look at. All right, God, what are you saying to me? Remember, uh, so God is saying, PJ, be pitched within and without. You don't, you, you don't let things get into your mind. But listen, put that bitumen back. Uh, put 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 the Holy Ghost back on the walls. You are pitched within and without. You should be able to pass through the storm without the storm passing through you. You need to preserve life. Um, uh, and then also, God's been getting my mouth together. I had to take a look at what I've been confessing. Uh, so uh, so so I'm, I'm I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to me. All right. But James reads you and me. He read. I mean, he gets up in our business. Turn it over to James uh, chapter one. We're gonna look at one scripture from the um, uh, the NASB. Verse twenty six. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. Listen, if that doesn't make it clear, I don't know what does. If you do not know how to control your tongue, the scripture is saying here that if you are a Christian, if you are saying that you are a believer, uh, that if you don't know how to control your tongue, what you're saying you believe is worthless. Your your religion, your faith is, 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 is vain. Uh, it, it, it is just of, of no effect. It means nothing. Uh, that it has no value. So we have to be able to recognize the importance of our mouths, uh, what our tongues have the power to do. Remember, they can give life or they can kill, uh, but we've got to understand that there is a battle for our mouth. Remember that the enemy does not want you and I to be effective, that he does not want our faith uh, to really have value in this world. So one of the things that he does, we're still in point number one, that there is a battle for your mouth, that he wants to control uh, uh, what comes out of your mouth. 
But uh, the Bible says here in James chapter 1, verse 26, that if we do not learn how to bridle our tongues, how to uh, 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 control what comes out of our mouth, that our belief, our faith, our religion is worthless. So again, point number one, there is a battle for your mouth. Let's move a little further. Let's move a little further. Uh, uh, point number two, let me just give this to you uh, first. Point number two is that being filled with the Spirit, being filled causes good things to come out of your mouth. Being filled causes good things to come out of your mouth. Look back at um, uh, verse number uh, 19 again. It says, speak out to one another in psalms and hymns, in spiritual songs, uh, offering praise with voices, instruments, and making melody with all your heart unto the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, again, in Matthew chapter 12, it says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, but this is what I want you to understand. Again, whatever fills, it spills. What the enemy wants, and this is why we are pitch. We're pitch within and we're pitch without. That the Holy Spirit is that is that um, a binding or, or is 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 the sealant. Uh, is 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 the um, is is the coating uh, on the inside of this vessel that causes us to be able to pass through the storms without the storms passing through us. Uh, so uh, whatever's in our heart, it will come out of our mouths. Uh, but what we've got to make sure that we do again, we go back to being filled with spirit. The right spirit is within us. We've got to be sure that uh, in order for us to uh, have there be an outward expression of what's on the inside, we've got to do something. We've got to unhook our tongue from the world. We've got to hook our tongues to the Spirit of God. There has to be an unhooking that takes place. Uh, actually, that is what we're calling this message, unhooked or hooked. Well, that's what I'm calling it in my mind. <laughs> uh, that we have got to uh, unhook our tongues from the world, unhook our tongues from the natural, hook our tongues to our hearts. Well, well, what, what's in our heart? Well, we, we filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God is now that thing that is controlling my heart. That whatever fills, spills. Yeah, I've got the Spirit of God. I am fully persuaded and completely convinced. It is written on the tablets of my heart. It is tied around my neck. Now, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, if this thing is going to be real, if this thing is going to be true, I've got to unhook my tongue from the world. And I've got to hook my tongue to the Spirit of God. Why? Because I cannot walk around this earth. You cannot walk around this world. We cannot walk about saying what the world is saying and expecting to experience what God has said. I cannot speak bad things and then expect the goodness of God. I cannot speak things of the natural and then expect there to be a manifestation of the supernatural. So being filled will cause good things to come out of our mouth. That is what Paul was saying here uh, in verse 19. Listen, you fill with the Spirit, you're stimulated by it, good things are going to come, are going to come out of your mouth. What good things? Praise, <laughs> songs, melodies. You're going to give God glory. You're going to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, I bless His holy name. I'm not going to forget not one of His benefits. I understand what God is doing. Listen, he satisfies my mouth with good things and he restores, he renews my youth like the eagles. So when I am filled with the spirit, goodness is, uh, is going to come out of my mouth. Now, I'm not going to throw your family members and your friends out here, but if bad things are coming out of your mouth, maybe they're not filled with the spirit. And I'm talking about believers as well. So again, it is a daily renewal that needs to take place. It is, it is a consciousness that must be present. Remember, we looked at Psalm 62. David said, uh, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, conscious focus, my intentional narrowing in is God alone. So I, I'm being purposeful. That's what Paul is saying here to the believers at Ephesus. Live a purposeful life. So I'm living on purpose. I am being conscious of, uh, of, of what I'm saying because I need to make sure that there is an outward expression of an inward experience. Number one, there's a battle for your mouth. Number two, when you're filled with the Spirit, good things will come out of your mouth. Let's move on a little further. 
Okay, so now that we know that there's a battle for our mouth, now that we know that uh, that our mouths have power, uh, and that, that what comes out of our mouth uh, has power, that they are spirit words that give life, and then also, of course, that when we're filled with the spirit, uh, good things come out of our mouths, that we are not going to operate from a place where we have a world mouth, a world mouth will speak anger, bitterness, arguments, negativity, but a spirit mouth will speak joy, will speak uh, a blessing, will uh, not speak curses like a world mouth does, but it will speak uh, things that are positive, uh, peace, love. Uh, but uh, now moving a little further, understand this, that being filled with the Spirit, and remember Paul is now talking about our mouths, being filled with the Spirit causes for there to be an acknowledgement, causes for there to be a thanksgiving for all things for all things. Look at verse, uh, let, let's look a little further, look at verse number uh, 20 now from the classic Amplified of Ephesians chapter 5. At all times and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Now here it is when Paul uses the phrase all things. That is often something that in this life as Christians, in this life as believers, you know, uh, uh, we get all uh, misconstrued and, and really it causes for people who are unbelievers to look at us funny because uh, they start looking at us and I'm like, wait a minute, you got into a car accident and you saying, oh, I thank God for all things. You know, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm just thanking God for where I am. I know, I know that I got a bad report from the doctor, but I just, I just, I'm just going to give God thanks. And it's like, here's the thing. Uh, when, when Paul here says all things, he's not talking about uh, thank God for the bad. He's not talking about thank God for the things in the natural. He's saying thank God uh, for the good. Thank God for these spiritual things. He's talking about spiritual things all the way through chapter 5. Now, we're not, we cannot say that now all of a sudden in verse 20 he's going to go to carnality. He's not going to talk about uh, the supernatural, talk about spiritual things, and then in verse 20, talk about natural things. No, no, no. He's saying in all things. Uh, thank God for all things. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about grace. We're talking about mercy. We're talking about the benefits of God. So now, when you're filled with the Spirit, what will come out of your mouth is a thanksgiving for all things. I'm talking about the things that come from God. I'm thanking God for his mercy. I'm thanking God for his grace. This is evidence. This is an outward expression of being filled with the spirit. We're not talking about carnality. We're not talking about natural things. It's almost like in Romans uh, 8 uh, verse 28 when people, uh, uh, and again, this is one of those things that we just throw out there and it sounds good, but it's not really Bible. It sounds good, but it doesn't fit the purpose of what the, uh, the original intent of the scripture was and what was trying to be communicated to us, the readers, in the uh, in the ones who are really digesting the word of God and walking by it. Well, when it says that all things work together uh, for the good, not talking about natural things. That that, that that we're not talking about. If you, if you get into a car accident, all things work together. Uh, if, if 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 something goes wrong in the family, uh, all things work together. I get fired from my job. All things work together. It's not talking about that. that if we look at what Paul is really speaking about and what uh, God is leading him to speak to us about. He's talking about intercession. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about uh, the benefits of being in Christ and Christ in us. He's not talking about carnality, but in the midst of all those things that I'm going through, and when thanksgiving comes out of my mouth, yes, there may be a car accident, but God, I'm thanking you for the power of intercession. Uh, I may have gotten a bad report from the doctor, but God, I'm thanking you for the power of the Holy Ghost. I may have gotten fired from my job, but God, I'm thanking you for your grace. I'm thanking you for your mercy. So now all things work together. What things are working together? Well, the Holy Ghost is working together. The, the Word of God is working together. The, the Spirit Spirit of God is working together. The fact that God has given me his spirit. God, I thank you for giving me your spirit. God, I thank you for the power of prayer. God, I'm thanking you that I can come boldly to you, that I can come boldly to your throne and receive grace.
grace, receive mercy, receive peace. God, I thank you that I have favor with you and now you also give me favor with man. God, I thank you that not only can I pray and not only uh, can I call out to you and you hear me, but I thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit reminds me in Romans chapter 8 that I am a son of God. God, I thank you and all these things are working together. The fact that I'm your son, God, it's working together. The fact that I've been called and I've been anointed and you have called me and you will do it. God, I thank you. It's working together. God, I thank you that your Bible says that over 2,000 years ago, I was already healed. So now I walk in divine health. It's working together. God, I thank you that your word is working. God, I thank you that your spirit is working. God, I thank you that your grace is working. God, I thank you that every day your mercy is working. All things work together. All things work together. So now Paul was saying in Ephesians chapter 5, listen, giving thanks for all things, in all things, for all things, giving thanks. I'm giving thanks to God for all of his benefits. Forget not one of his benefits. Listen, there's a battle for your mouth. When you are filled with the Spirit, good things will come out of your mouth. And then lastly, when you are filled with the Spirit, there is a thanksgiving for all things. All good things we're talking about. Paul is addressing and acknowledging our mouths. So as you continue for the rest of this week, uh, you might be like me after that because I was thinking myself happy, but I'm on video so I'm not trying to holler. Uh, I pray that you will be like me and you will pause to catch your breath. You will pause to check yourself, to check your mouth. That if you want there to be a resuming after interruptions, you got to check your mouth. That you will be conscious of where your focus is as you move about this week and that you will be conscious of what comes out of your mouth. Listen, my prayer for you is often a prayer that I say over myself, especially when I uh, am dealing with interruptions, when I have to have tough conversation. Remember, we're one tough conversation away from a next level of growth. But my prayer for you is that as you navigate this week, as you have conversations with others, even as you have conversations with yourself, that nothing will come out of your mouth before putting God at the beginning of the thought. That is my prayer for you. Remember that there's a battle for your mouth, that you are filled with the Spirit and you're gonna, you are stimulated by it. Therefore, good things come out of your mouth. What are those good things? Well, there's a sense of you giving thanks for all things. There's so many things, there's so many benefits that you can thank God for. You're filled with the Spirit, stimulated by it. So now, what comes out of your mouth is the thanksgiving for all of the benefits. Don't forget not one of them. Listen, thank you all so much for giving for all those who are sowing to the ministry. And I know that I know you are sitting on the edge of your seats. We have some awesome things that are getting ready to happen for the rest of this year and leading into uh, 2021. Um, chew on this word. Love you. Go back. Look at all your notes and uh, study. I love you. Share this with someone. Bless someone. And I'll talk to you real soon. Peace.